இன்னைக்கு நம்முடைய சாய்தி பக்கம் அவங்க எங்க போனாலும் கூட டிக்கெட் கிடைக்கிறது இல்லை ஸோ வேற அவர் ஹி கோஸ் யூ ஹார்ட்லி ஃபைன் டிக்கெட்ஸ் பீப்புள் ஜஸ்ட் டோன்ட் கெட் டிக்கெட்ஸ் ஐம் ஐம் ஷூர் மெனி ஆஃப் யூ மஸ்ட் அவாட் த சேம் ப்ராப்ளம் யா சச் அ பிரில்லியன்ட் ஸ்பீக்கர் a breath of fresh air very straight like piercing an arrow an arrow with an arrow that kind of accuracy with which he speaks so dear brother sai deepak avargale and all the eminent people of kamya and uh, very young audience pretty young audience when you see from here you see very young audience here and possibly that is what we want uh, people who can imbibe the spirit of being a bharatiya and take it to the next generation because we got lot of busting popular misconceptions to do and your mind is very fresh it's fertile and you have the ability to call a spade a spade and you are born in a time when india is discovering itself rediscovering itself and that is why we are using the word called new india that is why i feel very happy that the audience here predominantly is very young and our senior audience here they are willing to share their experience because they are waiting for such a long time i would straight away dive into my field where i am in now politics and think like a bharatiya what has happened what is happening now and what will happen maybe 25 years from now and what is the india that we are looking at so i personally believe it is important to decolonize our mindset so this is the time where we have to declutter decolonize our mindset and india is that in that face and the face la nam irukkoronga konja konjama and the face la ipo da aarambichirukku first we are taking out the popular misconception we are just removing it now many places we are rediscovering our culture many places we are restoring our culture step number 3 and step number 4 would be practicing our culture and step number 5 would be bridging and popularizing our culture it's a step it is not going to happen overnight it is not going to happen tomorrow morning but you will see in the last 10 years the shift has happened many popular misconception being removed culture being rediscovered being practiced being popularized and possibly we'll get to the bridging mode and you are paakring 14th of this month 3 days from now our honorable prime minister is in abu dhabi is inaugurating a hindu temple there a land gifted a land gifted by the sheikhs there 27 acre and that mandir has got lord ayappa lord muruga lord ganapati it has got lord rama sita mata it has got every god from north to south east to west what we practice with those gods how our life is intertwined so all those god are inside the temple which is essentially the sanadana dharma and 14th honorable pm is inaugurating it so he is he is already into the fifth mode he is already into the bridging mode as people are talking about discovering practicing pm is already thinking about bridging mode he is in a different country 27 acres a temple being inaugurated 14th of february but fundamentally the word secular which is tied up as for a long point of time in our history books the first thing that is taught is be secular practice secularism and wherever we want to do something also they said oh this is not secular and this is a state where a bhumi puja is not called secular and there are some mps who will come and say how dare you do bhumi puja this is a land of dravidians so bhumi puja we don't accept so you are wondering what is the secularism how did this word secularism enter into our social fabric or probably misconstructed over a point of time and multiple generations being met to being made to read thought this is secular this is secular and then we think that is the way we should behave if we deviate from the norm then probably people will scold us or probably we might be away from the pack the word secular came into a very very popular imagination it came into the popular imagination 1951 the usage of word called secular first time we see by a british writer inspired by socialist idea called george holyak so he he got this first word called secular socialist ideology got inspired he got this concept of secular then our constitution when it was founded when the document was written sai deepak is the expert of it i will not get into it how it was written why it was written why it was changed during the emergency 
why the word called secular was inserted into it and probably I'm sure you'll touch more on it. After that, the despiritualization started. In a state like Tamil Nadu, it started much before. But rest of the country, it started slightly later because their culture was holding on to it during the initial rule of the Congress period, 1950s, 60s and 70s. Then when all institutions were attacked together by the concept of secularism, the despiritualization process started one after the other. The Dravidian ideology in Tamil Nadu, when it came, like a brother it brought despiritualization along with it. Now in our Yatra, we are going across Tamil Nadu, we have done 198 till yesterday, today we are finishing 200. Now, this Yenman Yenmakal is a very valuable experience for me personally because there are 35 Lord Rama temples in Tamil Nadu which is 1000 years old inside our state the geographical boundary what we call as Tamil Nadu now there are 35 temples of Lord Rama which is 1000 years old I'm not talking of 10 years or 100 years or 200 years old even for Lord Rama to be born there is a temple in Arani, if at all you happen to visit that part of Tamil Nadu, where Dasaratha Maharaja came. He prayed to the Lord Shiva there, Puttira Kameteshwara temple. Dasaratha Maharaja wanted a son or wanted a child to take care of his empire. Even Lord Rama was born in our country after the prayers being offered in Arani. So you go to the temple, you see... Puttira Kamateshwara temple there, you see all the history and all the, sometimes some little bit folklore also associated with the temple. When you go to Sri Rangam, you see Lord Rama's Kula Devata, Kula Deva himself was gifted to Vibhishana and Vibhishana kept it in Sri Rangam, which you go and pray now. Recently before the Prana Pradishta, he made a very important point by visiting Sri Rangam by taking blessings from that deity and then carrying out over the important task that is given to him by performing the role of Prana Pratishta. And then when you happen to visit the Suryanara temple near Kumbhakonam Tanjavur, you happen to see a gunda there called Jatayu Gundam. That is the place Lord Rama brought Jatayu and performed the last rites for Jatayu. Even now you go there, there is Jatayu Gundam and people go there, pray and come. So you travel all parts of Tamil Nadu. Maybe we popularly know Lord Ramanatha Swami temple in Rameshwar. But you go to small towns, you go to Mufasal towns everywhere. You see Lord Rama's connection in every single part of Tamil Nadu, which is at least a thousand year old, at least thousand year old. Now after the Dravidian philosophy started gaining traction here, the despiritualization process started. Then the state had gone to a level where a particular group thought it fit to put chapel on Lord Rama. So that is the level to which they have taken. So we have to understand why this shift happened and why there are still some proponents in our state who believe in secession, who believe in a separate uh, state, who mock a practicing religion, who mock a practicing culture, who somehow think a person who is practicing a culture that is essential to their way of life. In a way, if I put it, they might say that we are idiots. Now, this is the first important thing that we have to do. Remove the popular misconception. That is a very important thing that is available right in front of you, which all of us have to do with a lot of sense of vigor. திரித்து வேறு வேறு காலகட்டத்திலே எழுதி இருக்கின்றார்கள் என்பதை புரிந்து கொள்ள வேண்டும் அதற்கு நாம எக்ஸ்டென்சிவா டிராவல் பண்ணணும் சோ வென் எவர் யூ ஃபைண்ட் டைம் யூ ஷட் மேக் இட் மேக் இட் அ பாயிண்ட் டு விசிட் ஆல் பார்ட்ஸ் ஆஃப் இந்தியா சின்ஸ் வி ஆர் லிவிங் இன் தமிழ்நாடு நம்ம ஊர்ல இருக்கும் எங்க எல்லாம் வாய்ப்பு கிடைக்கிறதோ நீங்க நேரம் எடுத்து மைண்ட் ஓபன் பண்ணி ஒரு சென்ஸ் ஆஃப் அவேர்னஸ்ல யூ ஷட் கீப் அப்சர்விங் வாட் இஸ் ஹேப்பனிங் பி இட் அ டெம்பிள் பி இட் அன் ஆர்கியாலஜிக்கல் ஃபைண்டிங் Whatever it is, we have to find out what is that culture. Because a person who has written a book and that book became, becoming our textbook should not define how we think. The way we think is some writer sitting somewhere probably belonging to a particular ideology writes a book. 
that becomes a textbook and taught to crores of children every year you do it for 10 years you can prove a cat is a dog is a tiger தொடர்ந்து 10 ஆண்டுகள் இதே விஷயத்தை திரும்ப திரும்ப சொன்னீங்கனா ஒரு பூனை எடுத்துட்டு வந்து நாயினு சொல்லலாம் அதே வந்து புலினு சொல்லலாம் அதனால நாம் இந்த ஜெனரேஷன்ல we have to go beyond textbooks we got to travel understand research think deeply and connect to all the small places that is connected to our culture go there get inspired then probably forums like this even a tea shop even a marriage function even a social gathering nama pesa aarambikka 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 it will act as a catalyst it will gain a currency of its own then the step one of busting the popular misconception will start happening right in front of our eyes the great jawaharlal nehru at one point of time it was very fascinated ungalku theriyum even to write the constitution of india he wanted edward jennings he said that he should write the indian constitution so that you can bring all the fancy ideas that he was used to probably when he was educated he wanted edward jennings to come and write the indian constitution of many good things mahatma gandhi did i think this is one of the greatest thing that he did is he stopped nehru from calling edward jennings to write the constitution of india he said it is dr b r ambedkar who should write and maybe it's a it's a twist with the destiny that b r ambedkar ji wrote the constitution of india not edward jennings adan piraganga nehru avargal he called historian arnold toynbee to address the azad memorial lecture when it was an annual lecture series pandit jawaharlal nehru as the prime minister of our country he invited him in 1960 arnold toynbee to come and address this lecture i am just quoting what arnold toynbee at that point of time said in his lecture in 1960 he said aurangazeb converted this temples with the deliberate in- intention of insulting his political opponents the same intention which the russians had in building the orthodox church in the center of warsaw poland so enna solrarranga 1960 la when the issue of ram temple was picking up the old issue after independence it was still continuing when there was a lot of disputes about the places of worship act whether we should restrict it to only that or we should go on reclaiming all the culture and civilization of glory that we have lost at different points of time a victa deliberately insulting a practicing religion by putting up some structure because they wanted to convey a message in the mari pala discussion irukum bolunga peak of the discussion in the azad memorial lecture he says aurangasip converted this temples with the deliberate intention of insulting his political opponents nero in his own wisdom chose not to listen to the guest whom he invited in the first place to deliver the azad memorial lecture neenga paarenga even the statue of george 5 which was adorning delhi was not removed till pandit jawaharlal nehru's last breath remove panna velling adha vande jawaharlal nehru avargal iranda piragu 1968 george 5 was removed appo nammalle oru chinna oru paasam ayyo george 5 poi poitaaru ana canopy apdi vechikalam you see how we are attached to lot of things that is absolutely foreign to us 1968 george 5 was taken out but canopy was standing there without anybody then he took our narendra modi ji step 2 to bring netaji subhash chandra bose to the same canopy to put it. so in the context nam purinjikkanga it is very important it is very important to understand the context when poland got absolute independence or probably when it saved itself from the occupation the first thing warsaw people and polish people did is they broke the russian orthodox church that is built in their country they rebuilt it with catholic church which is their practicing faith every country has done it ellarum panirka a victor an aggressor who came who put their symbol as a resistance for a long point of time all over the world people did it but india mari or nadla paathinga na it was a very touchy subject we were never willing to have a conversation or to go deep into it However, even in the case of George V, remove only the statue, but the canopy should be there. At least the canopy is there, and I will be happy. Then we have to bring Netaji Subhashandra both there. Now, if you look at Ramayana, a state like Tamil Nadu, 
January 22, even to watch Prana Pradeshta, we had to go to Supreme Court in the middle of the night, get an order, and to say people can watch. And in the case, the constitutional monarch of Thailand, the king, the king is the constitutional monarch, he goes by a different name. But the English title that is given to the constitutional monarch of Thailand is Rama. Any kings who come, who is the constitutional monarch, the name that is given to the king, the English name by which every other person outside Thailand will know is Rama X, abdinger title, any king who comes. In fact, Rama in our version, Patikina, Rama Kane is very popular, more like a national epic in Thailand. Look at all the East Asian culture. Small countries fighting vigorously to retain the culture. That probably that culture also went to those countries from our country. Namur and the Angapochin. And I the celebration of Ramayana or celebration of Mahabharata, possibly in a state like Tamil Nadu, they think is very alien. This is a very, very important part of part number two, where we know our culture, we understand where we are. We try to rebuild it. Now part three, restoring our culture. That is what is happening now. Now we are trying to restore the bits and pieces. We are trying to restore whatever we have lost and trying to bring it to our national consciousness. Now, you look at what Honorable Prime Minister has done over the last maybe nine, now in the tenth year. Taking yoga. Now yoga, International Yoga Day is one. Now yoga being practiced on June 21 last year across 192 all signatories of UN, nation, UN United Nations. Gaining popular imagination. Trying to understand mind, body, soul connect through yoga. Now this is the very essence of our civilization. Yoga exhibits how our mind, body and spirit, everything is aligned together when we live a life of detachment. Indika, Prime Minister has reimagined again the North-South, whatever the artificial divide has created. Kasi Tamil Sangamam, Saurashtra Tamil Sangamam, the second year of Kasi Tamil Sangamam, first year of Telugu Sangamam, the first year of Yoshakti Sangamam. Now this, all these things are started because it is important we have to cement our culture, not only busting the myth, not only knowing, but putting the culture in action. I don't know how many people had the opportunity to come and visit. You know, 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 you because this is one way to make sure, right from Ramakatha to every single art and form, even some art and form that is present only in a village, that is present only in an area, like Kongi area. You go to Kongi area, you see Vallikumi. Or you go to some other parts of Tamil Nadu, maybe that art form is present only in that particular part, part of that area. Every single thing was catalogued, given an opportunity over 7-8 days, and given an opportunity to present because... The next generation knows this is there, this is part of my culture, and this is not allowed to die down. You see Padma Virudhagal, Padma Vibhushan, Padma Bhushan, and Padma Shri. Close to 50-60% is given for arts culture, performing arts and performing culture. 50-60% of Virudh Angadang is given. Or 20% is given to the rest has gone for social service. Over a point of time, we were very particular. Art, culture, this is the very essence of being a Bharatiya. Because that is where the stories get told. It is not a textbook. Like Madam said, Vaijayanti Madam, Bali Madam, Mandi Anak Soli Kurutanga. Now I am teaching to uh, our sister. Now this is where essentially the story goes from generation to generation. There is no somebody inside to interpret and write a textbook and bring it to a school. So that you understand this is the truth, gospel truth. So art and culture, especially art, performing art, it carries the popular culture from generation to generation without distortion. That's why we are doing Tamil Sangamam, Saurashtra Tamil Sangamam. Do you want to see G20 Manadu? Previously, what is the gift you used to give? You must have seen the Honorable Prime Minister giving gifts to all the delegates of G20. What do you want to say? Kanjiburam stole, shawl, sari, aramachu. Ooti tea. In India, the geographical indicator is one of the people who are living in India. Whoever came, it was given to them because they should know this is part of our culture, part of being a Bharatiya.
and the very first time and the very first time g20 was taken outside the national capital delhi ki veliya nga 198 functions across close to 100 venues if they come to kanjipuram g20 or mahabalipuram the food has to reflect that particular area it's very important food is also different tamil nadu la mattum neenga paathinga na 150 rku merpatta arisi vagaigal irukku anna ithana per nam irukku we go to a supermarket we say give me a bag of rice or give me a jasmine rice or give me a basmati rice idha vaangura 150 rku merpatta arisi vagaigal nammudaiya oru maanilathila mattume irukku nel jeraman ayya pondra avargal ethaniyo arisi vagaigala meet kuduthirukka so this is also part of being a bharatiya unga oorla unga pakkathila unga thannila unga soil la unga body ku yerpuda irukkakoodiya arisiya neenga saapanum it should not travel more than 10 km or 50 km or 70 km now it is all becoming a supermarket oriented this is also we have to declutter so g20 la enna effort inga enga poraangalo andha oora saapanum unava saapanum so right to that level they have detailed the g20 not only is taken out of delhi the detailed and execution was so perfect to the last point wherever the g20 conference or youth summit or any other summit that was happening connected to g20 it was reflecting the ethos of that particular the beauty of bharatiya is this is the beauty of being a bharatiya we are so diverse but we are so united every other country will fight balkanization will happen they will split but evlavu kelo diverse irukkaramo avlavu kelo we have united adutha paarenga the prime minister has made an effort especially with respect to our tamil culture statue of thiruvalluvar in france houston tamil chair in houston university or lord mahakavi bharathiyar avrudaiya or irukai vande kasi la benaras hindu palgalai kalagathana so he keeps doing all these things because everybody from other parts of india should know who lived in other parts of india and who is important to our culture idella paarenga evlo careful la step number 3 or honorable prime minister is executing to perfection kashi viswanath corridor ah irukatunga mahakal corridor ah irukatum kartapur sahit corridor ah irukatum india and pakistan or the inauguration of mata sharada devi temple in kashmir ah irukatunga so everything is bringing our culture back in a form that we need it now so sila perunga if you travel outside the country not only we are restoring our culture inside the country next sri lanka ponga so there are ishwaran temples across five corners of sri lanka la ravana avanga katta katna koil now we are restoring one after the other all the five temples around sri lanka thiru ketishwaram is restored by the government of india's grant it is gifted to the people of sri lanka as a grant from india adu panniyaachinga adutha tirukoneeshwarath nokki nammude arasu sentu kondirukke so not only are we doing it in our country we are also going outside the country now this is step number 4 where we talk about not only practicing but also bridging and popularizing veli eduthittu poran now we all have to understand at a very important point of time in india's history very important point of time in india's history the next 25 years the next 25 years is going to be very important moment because right now the popular misconception we have broken we are reimagining our culture we are taking it to the masses and more importantly we are expanding and bridging it idu ipo nadaka aarambichirchinga so that is the point we are living in konja indha nerathila paathinga na the resistance is also quite high because the forces that was operating till now itna yaandugalaga endha prachane illama resistance illama irundha forces alla now they have to unite together naturally they all have to unite together they all have to come and attack they all have to come and say no 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 this is hindutva no 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 this is something this is rss version of india's culture so they do this is the time when we as citizens we start having small conversations not big conversations some of the eminent people who are sitting in the front row sitting here they do their duty by having big conversations television studio la periya forathla in front of 10000 people they speak now. but to get this thing done it is important this small conversation happens in millions and crores rent per family kulla society kulla college kulla canteen kulla inga or book launch function la 
the small conversations 10 people 15 people should have among themselves by saying look this is happening look this is my temple look there is an important archaeological historical place here this is the connection look and even when we invite our friends if at all you have to suggest a good tourist place outside Chennai to your friend yesterday our Padayatra 195th constituency was in Kanchipuram so you go there, you see a Kulotunga Chola times inscription there. 10th century, 1100 years before. Small a village kind of town. Three rivers surrounding that village. Very beautiful, very pristine, very, ser very serene place. If you have the time to go to that Vaigundam, Vaigundavasi, Varadaraja Peramal temple, Kulotunga Chola has put inscriptions around that temple. You just have to take their time to observe. He has put three inscriptions about how election should be conducted. We are talking of 1100 years before. The first inscription talks about who can contest an election. The second inscription talks about how election should be conducted. The third inscription talks about after a person is elected, how can you remove him? So three things. If you have the time to go and read it, you will be so fascinated. The concept of democracy, 1,100 years back, he has etched it there, probably when we are shifting from Mannarachi to Makkalachi. When that shift was happening at different points in, in our country, in Bharat, he has put it. Now I will just take a couple of minutes to explain what is written in that inscription. You will feel so beautiful. Now suddenly they talk about uh, India's constitution was copied from so many people. We have taken inspiration from Ireland. We have taken inspiration from Britain and so many things they talk. They say a person who has to be in political life has to be, has to enter politics after 30. Until 70 he has to be in politics. And the whole place is divided into 30 wards. Each ward will have one elected member. A person can become an elected member only once in their lifetime. Only once. And the period is exactly 360 days. 360th day you are outside. Once you are in public life, one time, elect, getting the member of that ward, you can never stand for election in your life. And on the point, they had five different variums there. A, a temple varium, a canal varium, a garden varium. So you are a member of a warium for one year, there is a three year cooling off period, then you can become a member of what? So which means in your life, you can be a member of warium once, you can be a member of ward once. There are 35 crimes they have mentioned. If you have committed any of those crimes in your lifetime, you can never contest for election. And after you have won the election, they have listed another 17 misdemeanors. You have done the 17 mistakes by being a representative of public. Then you will be kind of impeached. So there's three inscriptions very beautifully. Very beautifully. The fulcrum of democracy. Just about one and a half hours from here. In Kanchipuram districts. You go there, you read it, you come. Not Disney World. Not this Perisona Premala defamation suit. Not this place where some snow is there. Not some big, big malls. So not those places. Small places around us. Take them, take our children there, show them, make them to read. Connect them to our culture. Then they understand, oh, the essence of Bharatiya means that we have to be democratic in nature. And being democratic in nature doesn't mean sh shutting down somebody's voice. And being democratic in nature means, so they will understand everything, we got to be spiritual. And every single thing, when we take our children to places, make them to connect, make them to read, make them to listen, I think we groom them for the next year. We travel less. As Indians, we somehow have the feeling we are traveling more. No, we are traveling very less. Our forefathers traveled more. Catching an airplane, landing in Delhi, Attending a conference, catching an airplane, coming back to Chennai doesn't mean we are traveling more. So this generation is only clocking air miles or probably clocking train miles. But we are a very poor generation in terms of traveling. 
முன்னாடி இருக்கக்கூடிய நல்ல மனிதர்கள் எல்லாம் அமர்ந்திருக்கிறாங்க தெர் இஸ் அவர் மெரி வெரி எமினன் ஃப்ரெண்ட் எவ்ரி டே யூ சீம் இந்த டிவி டாக்கிங் வெரி லவுட்லி அபவுட் ஆர் சிவிலைசேஷன் ஆர் குளோரி ஆர் கல்ச்சர் ஸோ இவங்களுக்கு நாம் ஹெல்ப் பண்ணணும் சப்போர்ட் பண்ணணும் டு ஆக்சலரேட் தேர் தாட் ப்ராசஸ் இட் இஸ் இம்பார்ட்டன் அஸ் இந்தியன்ஸ் வி ஹவ் டு ட்ராவல் மோருங்க வி ஆர் நாட் ட்ராவலிங் அண்ட் ஃபார் அஸ் த கான்செப்ட் ஆஃப் ஹாலிடே இஸ் டேக் ஈவன் வித் இன் இந்தியா கோ தேர் புக் அ நைஸ் ரிசார்ட் ரிலாக்ஸ் சம் சைட் சீயிங் சம் பீச் மேபி வாட் இஸ் தட் தே டேக் திஸ் பேராஷூட் கைண்ட் ஆஃப் திங் தேர் அண்ட் கோ டவுன் and they say i had a good holiday romba thappu pandranga i think we are making a big mistake to our children if we think that is a holiday we are taking take them to a place make them to eat a local food local food and the urnudaiya kambu saadam and the urnudaiya sola saadam and the urnudaiya millets and the urnudaiya ragi nan yerkenave sonna da pola 150 rukku merpatta rice variety la oru rice variety and the urla kandupidichu அங்க இருக்கக்கூடிய நேச்சுரல் ஃபுட்ட ஒரு எக்ஸ்பீரியன்ஸ் ஒரு எக்ஸ்ப்ளோரேஷன் அந்த குழந்தைக்கு சோ when the children comes back he will keep or he or she will keep thinking oh some new thing he will come and tell somebody in the school na enga ponan theriyuma ipo school la children enga pesranga na stalking la ponan theriyuma na disease world ponan theriyuma na inga ponan theriyuma anga ponan theriyuma so let us make a conscious effort to think like a bharatiya take us outside the shell consciously travel more connect to all the historical places accelerate the thought process of prime minister sri narendra modi ji who thinks this is the time to grow with our cultural intact so kandipa adu nadakkungara periya nambike enak irukkunga so this is very important event because ahuti is not only into performing space but today or maybe multiple days they have decided let us have a forum like this invite people make them to talk what they think bring young minds here award some prizes also for children who has done some good work and probably spread this word accelerate the process so that we become a true bharatiya maybe maybe in the near times not we are talking of not even 20 25 years later in the near times with this i thank sister sivasri for the great opportunity that she has given me to come here and uh, sharing stage with uh, my dear friend sai deepak and uh, we are very very sure we are on the cusp of change even tamil nadu is on the cusp of change we just have to wait till 2024 we just have to wait till 2024 the elections in 2024 will be a proof that our state will give a decisive mandate will give a decisive mandate so whatever they have spoken over a long point of time so let us be patient let us keep doing that ground work without any expectation so that our future generations will live a great life thank you so much jai hind jai shri ram vanakkam and namaskaram my mind is actually bursting with thoughts and possibilities especially after hearing this man speak i'm usually known for speaking extempore i never go with any kind of preparation because i believe 24 by 7 is the preparation mode i don't prepare for any event but the number of ideas that kept bursting in my head when he was talking my template was one he's just uh, multiplied it so let me thank shivashri for giving me an opportunity to share space with kamaraj 2.0 in 2022 i think i had the opportunity to call him tamil nadu in tamarai Kamaraj 2.0 why one because it's time that bharat had the third prime minister from the south but before that 
தமிழ்நாட்டுக்கு பிடிச்ச அந்த புற்றுநோய் நைன்டீன் சிக்ஸ்டி செவன்ல அது முதல்ல ஒழியணும் that virus that has gripped the holy state of tamil nadu this dharmic land needs to be eradicated first kalam samayam time has finally given us this option i request the dharmikas in tamil nadu the hindus of tamil nadu to throw their weight behind this man i'm making this public it is now or never this is a do or die battle 2026 anj pushkaram 60 years mudinjirko since 1967 it is time to take a decision you have to mean business every vote matters every middle class vote every thinking vote must not think of it as a holiday must go out in the sun and do whatever is necessary we are just 2 years away this was not meant to be a political speech but unfortunately our land has been heavily politicized our religion has been politicized i am left with no other option but to speak about this bluntly when we speak of think like a bharatiya and since he has touched upon the topic of secularism i am happy he has actually done that over the last 3 years something tectonic has taken place and i think it's important for people to take note of it i am speaking in tamil primarily because there's a youtube audience that's watching rather than english because there's a youtube uh, audience that's watching and ennoda tamil sila perukku pidikadu one decolonization has finally entered indian political discourse and that's a fantastic victory the tragedy is that this conversation should have started in 1947 and it has started in 2020s no other post colonial independent society can boast of this kind of prolonged mental slavery ever i know what people like me have gone through in tamil nadu i have witnessed it on campuses i have suffered the consequences of it but the only promise and sankalpam i made to myself was that i will never become a jati activist i will speak for the community as a whole i have no pretensions or delusions of becoming a leader at all under any circumstances or a representative but i will certainly ensure that every ounce of my energy and brain is used to support people like him because i think it's time we did away with the concept of politicians and we think of thinking leaders this is what we want people who understand the concept of rajadharmam that is crucial that takes me to the concept of secularism because anybody who understands the history of secularism will tell you that secularism is political conversion its job is to sever your roots your connection with your roots its entire purpose is to make sure that you forget your past and it becomes the new religion because human kind cannot survive without religion therefore secularism has become the new religion unfortunately the purpose of these tools is to ensure that you forget one of the most important let's say concept in the life of dharmikas which is pitris ancestors your people your forefathers that is why i call it political conversion because conversion requires you to spit on your past and to embrace a new identity that's completely antagonistic to your earlier identity hence it is political conversion knowing fully well that this would be the problem that it's a time bomb that's going to burst itself on a regular basis against the indigenous community 
the framers of the constitution chose not to use the word secularism as part of the preamble at all. All those fears, all those apprehensions have been vindicated with time to our detriment. To our detriment. There was a time when there was a different kind of a procession taken out of the Kanchi Matam in 2004. Finally, this man has gone to Kanchi. As a proud follower of the Kanchi Matam, I am super happy. Think like a Bharatiya. You can't think like a Bharatiya as long as you embrace secularism is my humble submission. <laughs> it is cognitive dissonance. If you think like a Bharatiya and also wear secularism as a badge of honor, you can't. They are incompatible. They are mutually destructive. And they are mutually exclusive. Tamil Nadu ke vidimokshan kada kiri varkiyam, Bharadat ke vidimokshan kada kya adhe. People like Dushyan Sridhar and others will continue to do what they will do on a public platform. But until this becomes a social, cultural revolution, don't expect people like him to fight this battle alone. It is impossible for us to survive and come out unscathed in this battle unless and until you realize that it is not your job anymore to simply outsource even your cultural battles to the politician. Because this battle is being, is being waged on your streets, in restaurants, in movie theaters. Dare I say more? I can. And the worst part is this cancer has entered the rest of the south. Bhakti should have been the biggest export of Tamil Nadu. This Dravidianist cancer is being exported to the rest of the south. In my living memory, I have never seen a separatist sentiment being expressed on the Dharmika state of Karnataka ever. Even that has happened because the way this cancer enters is actually true and consistent to its origins, which is cinema, which is art. So that's how it has entered Telangana and Andhra Pradesh through movies. That's how it has entered Karnataka. Kerala, of course, never needed it because it has its own cancer. Parashrama Kshetram should have been known for a different red. It is being known for a different red. So the point is, this civilization is a dharmic civilization. Own it, embrace it, be proud of it. That is fundamentally decolonization. If someone says, does it mean that we should embrace everything about the past? When every time I speak of decolonization, I get this nonsensical statement, I'm, I'm, I'm forced to say, does it mean that you have to spit on your past? No, you don't have to. These are not binaries. Anyone who chooses to focus exclusively on the problems of the past is not a well-wisher of this civilization because according to him, there is nothing positive worth being discussed. You have to look at the entire history of the civilization as a whole. It's not a monolith. And the civilization is called a civilization thanks to the scale of its diversity. So the realities, the political realities, the jati realities, the economic realities have been different in different parts of the country, but we are all painted with the same brush. So my suggestion to you is, we will keep doing this intellectual nonsense because that's a battle that has to be uh, fought at a certain level. But what is it that you can do if you have to think like a Bharatiya? Drawing from Mr. Annamalai's speech. One, temple tourism in Tamil Nadu must boom. <laughs> Repopulate our temples. Take back those spaces. Support all temple communities, the operative word being all. Use the temple to unite people. Use the temple to educate people. Bring them.
them out of perpetual victimhood. Oh, is it too sensitive a comment? <laughs> Sorry? Adhuvanakum, <laughs> wait for it, it'll happen. Today, our temples are held ransom by an ideology that has vowed destruction of our religion, has taken an oath for it, and they're being true to their political masters who are within and outside the country. The links go far beyond Bharat, and they've entered Europe. So you have to realize the magnitude of the problem that people like Annamalai face. These battles cannot be contested alone. I have no political affiliation whatsoever. I can say this bluntly with him being on the stage. My affiliation, my fealty, my loyalty is to my community, to my dharma, period. And precisely because I see a representative of dharma in him, I will support him. It is absolutely crucial that we understand the challenges. There are a lot of issues and deliverables that are entirely within our control. The first suggestion was going to the temple. There are Sardarji's members of the Sikh community who sing in Tamil, in Kumarangundam and other places. I've seen that happen. That is the unity of this land. Chardham Yatra is impossible without coming to the south and Sikhs also perform the Chardham Yatra. The utter nonsense that is being peddled about this community is a direct consequence of our ignorance. In the age of internet, none of us has the excuse for being ignorant. At all. You think it's easy like somebody, for somebody like Dushan Sridhar to wear the tripunda and go to the television and face all the people from the D-stocks? The kind of hatred, the kind of poison, the kind of bile that is being hurled at people like him is unbelievable. How do these people function? Not on your support but because of their inner spiritual core. Because most people think it's easy for people like him and I to take these positions because there is some popular support. None of you is going to be available. <laughs> Your intention may be to protect us, but you cannot be available all the time. So the point is not to protect us, but to start finding replacements for us. Keep creating them. These can't be personality-driven movements. Learn one thing from the Asura. Whenever you think of tapas, you think of the Asura. Because Asura tapas is unbelievable. Because when they commit themselves to something, they latch on to it. I learn from the Devas as well as the Asuras. I'm very clear about it. We must start looking at producing Raktabija Devas. <laughs> Every drop of blood in the land of Sanatana Dharma must create more Dharmika warriors. Over the last few weeks, knowing fully well what kind of a sensitive area Jati as a topic is, I have decided to embrace the cactus by talking about it. Because it is important for us to have these conversations. The more you shy away from these conversations, you make them tab taboo topics, somebody else is going to appropriate it. Somebody else with a vested interest is going to appropriate it. There will never be a conversation with honesty. And with honesty does not mean to deny everything that has happened, but also to say, please don't exaggerate. And also remember that it is meant to bring us together. If the purpose of the conversation is to divide us further, then it is fundamentally a bad faith engagement. It is a dishonest conversation. It's a motivated malicious conversation. And that is what happens every time we touch this topic. 
every incident is a potential entry point for the mischievous Dravidianist. He is waiting for it. So I would request you to use these platforms, these fora, and these institutions as a moment of societal churn. I know I'm in no position to make these suggestions, but I hope that I can make this to somebody like Sivashri, that even our concerts during Margari Masam must carry an important message. It cannot be just a Katha Kalakshepam or a pure cultural event, because none of our classical arts are being, let's say, kept away from this political conversation. Every institution, whether it is dedicated to Bharatanatyam or not, is now under the attack from the left. It's being taken over. Bharata Muni will not be taught in these places apparently. Bharata Muni will not be taught in an institution which is dedicated to Bharatanatyam is the scene of the Tamil Nadu of 2020s. And whoever wants to teach Bharata Muni's Bharatanatyam and Natya Shastra is being kicked out as a Hindutva fascist Sanghi. Imagine to what extent we have come down. When your arts are being taken away, remember the one final pure strand that is left between your culture, your past and your present is sought to be severed and corrupted fully. You can't let that happen. You can't let that happen. But don't go ahead with the victimhood complex. The difference between the Dravidianists and us is that go confidently out for engagement and your outreach must be genuine to all affected parties. Let opinions change. It's not going to be an easy battle, but I can say this with confidence. I say this with confidence. Nobody can accuse me of being different about my identity, jati or religion wise. And I have not seen my identity or opinion be a barrier when I'm engaging with confidence with people from my community, which is the Hindu community across the board. I've had people come and speak, explain their position, genuinely express a way to bridge this gap. This is not to my credit. I am saying that there is a willing audience out there, provided you show it in action. You cannot read the, what is that? I don't want to name the newspaper anymore. <laughs> because it's not what it's meant to be. It is the antithesis of its name. The Sri Maha Mao of Mount Road. <laughs> Find a way to get on the ground. You have only three ways of contributing to this battle. None of which is to just earn your livelihood and get out with it. Not happening. It, it's not happening anymore. You have to participate. Financially, what can you do? Culturally, what can you do? Intellectually, what can you do? Spiritually, what can you do? And if you have the ability, politically, what can you do? I understand that politics is not everybody's cup of tea, but everything else is within your remit. It's possible for you to do it. It has come to a point where I'm being asked, are there no Hindus left in Tamil Nadu? That's the question that's coming from North India or India of the North. This question has started coming. There are no reactions. Anybody says anything. There is absolutely no expression of discontent or displeasure whatsoever when people trample all over you like human doormats. If this is incitement, so be it. I am inciting you to action. I am inciting you to action. A different kind of direct action where you actually go onto the ground and engage with people from your community. It is crucial. These 25 years will define and decide what shall be the way of the future post 2047. This is a battleground generation. Never before in the history of the last 400 to 500 years have you been presented with an option where you actually are in a position to speak with a unified political Bharat? 
you were speaking with different princely states at one point, you finally have a politically unified Bharat, which is always civilizationally one. One, you have a politically unified Bharat. Then, you have been given democratic ways of communication where you're no more dependent on the mainstream media with its own vested ideological interests. Social media has made possible the reach of voices, like all of them. Who would have thought at one point that someone coming from Annamalai's background would be able to aspire for the best positions that this country's political system has to offer? This is a sign of change. This is a sign of change. When somebody has to go to court to prevent the viewing of Pranapratishtha, it's a sign of desperation. It is darkness at its highest position and that's where the resistance starts. When it is darkest, that's when there is a sense of hope because effectively he's exhausted all his arsenal. His ammunition is over. He has nothing more to offer. <laughs> While I practice in Delhi, I make this abundantly clear. Urukal inga kandipa erko. Because this is the time, this is the time those who were associated with the Ram Jaram Bhumi movement will tell you the significance of what I'm about to say. Ek dhakka aur do. Every structure that is anti-dharmic must crumble. And the Overton window must change. This must become the new normal, making it impossible for anybody to take the situation back. Impossible. Thanks to what has happened over the last decade, anyone who doesn't perform on the, on the anvils of economics will not be an acceptable option anymore. Since 2014 to 2024, that is the change. Jai Shri Ram has become a national sentiment. In the land of Ram Sami, Jai Shri Ram is back they will all be forced to confront it. Three, don't underestimate the will and the commitment and the venom of the other side. They know no boundaries, they have no standards. The definition of standard is lost on them. The concept of decency and courtesy is lost on them. That's the kind of people you're dealing with. They have no respect for women. They are the last one to speak of feminism. They shouldn't hold forth on feminism at all. None of them know how to respect women whatsoever. They shouldn't be allowed to get away with this. I know I have upset the entire script I had in mind. <laughs> but such is the effect that he has in terms of upsetting the established order. I thought I'll at least stick to the script I wrote and scribbled. I couldn't. <laughs> Grama Devatas and Kula Devatas are the battlegrounds, by the way. Please go back to them. Revive your Grama Devatas and Kula Devatas at the very least. Because the divide that they are hoping to succeed in is to divide temples from Grama Devatas and Kula Devatas and say, no, these are two different strands altogether. One has got nothing to do with Sanatana Dharma and this is all some Brahmin conspiracy. Please embrace those deities. I know for a fact that my own in-laws have Ayanar as the Kula Devata, which means they also serve meat and toddy. That's what these idiots don't understand. They won't understand. Every temple has a Padhati. Whatever the temple says, we will do it. Period. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter to me what is the origin of the priest. If the priest is a priest in a particular place of worship, you will surrender to his diktats as far as that institution is concerned. Break these silos. Since actions speak louder than words, the most powerful impact which the other side dreads is the repopulation of even the street temples, the unknown temples. Because Madurai Meenakshi will always get crowds. What about other temples? What about other temples? 
go back to those temples, forge your sense of community, which is the one thing lacking in this community, and that's haunted us for thousands of years now. And our definitions of community are in micro-definitions. Let us assume for a moment that I accept the reality that these micro-definitions cannot be done away with because they have withstood the test of time for thousands of years. I can only make one point. Respect every micro-identity. Treat everybody with respect. Because if you don't do that, respect will be replaced by dangerous victimhood complex. When you do that, when you take every profession seriously, you'll realize that all the professions which were in the hands of our communities, which have been lost to others, can be reclaimed. Otherwise, they'll come and live like destitutes in cities. It's not as if Chennai has the ability to accommodate everyone who comes here. It doesn't have the resources for it. And since they know for a fact that their professions will not be respected in the places of their origin, they have no other option but to get out of the place. One is a loss of dignity, the second is a loss of opportunity. We have to address both. And that will happen when you start going back to these places, when they realize that there is more footfall. So revisiting your places of worship is not just about religion, it's equally about economics. Go to Ayodhya and you will be surprised at the infrastructure development there. I am someone who believes in respecting sanctity first and ensuring that infrastructure organizes itself around that respect for that sacred space. I don't believe in corridorification at the expense of the sacred space. But I believe both of them can go hand in hand with a sense of balance. In Ayodhya, you will not believe for a moment some of those roads. Most of those roads are better than Chennai's roads, actually. <laughs> and... Bharatiyas know how to maintain infrastructure. The, the thought, the self-loathing thought that we don't know how to maintain infrastructure, Delhi Metro has been running fantastically since 2004. It's among the best in the world. Washington is really terrible, even in terms of its metro system. Delhi is brilliant. This is happening across the country. So when someone tells you, you don't know the value of economics, you don't know the value of maintaining infrastructure, that you are not clean fundamentally, address each of these aspects. These are fundamental deliverables where he and I don't need to play a role. We have no business playing a role in that. We can only tell you, this is the big picture, find your places within. Some of these battles, it's for you to embrace. I don't want to say anything further. I'll take questions from the audience for at best 10 minutes, assuming we have the time for it. Five minutes? Fair enough. Yes, shall we hand over the mic so that it's recorded? Otherwise, I'll be accused of scripting the interview. <laughs> I think we'll go with lots of students first, please. Yeah, I would want to give students an opportunity first. Hello. First of all, it's an absolute honor to meet both of my heroes in real life. Um, one would be a question exclusively for you. Another would be both of uh, you and Anna Malai yes, are now together because I don't know if I'll get an opportunity again. First is, since we're in Mailapur, do you think there is credence to the fact that uh, Mailapur Temple's original location is something else? And if that's true, do you think it's possible for us to get it back? <laughs> Second question, just one moment, uh, for Anna Malayana and you together. Um, as you know, Anna, um, concurrent list, item 28, is religious HRC. endowments. Yeah, yeah, got it. Why doesn't the central government, which has the power right now with an absolute majority, right. enact a law where they bring in temples not just for uh, Tamil Nadu, but for all of India, since Anna keeps saying that, um, you know, the first signature would be to remove the uh, HR and CE ministry. Right, right. Thank you so much. So, the temple reclamation question and the temple management question are two different aspects. So, let me try and address one of them and, and I'll hand it over to Mr. Anna Malay. First, when we wanted one, they said nothing doing. Now, when we're asking for the other with evidence, they're saying nothing doing. So when somebody displays that kind of intransigence, I will say then my position of minimalism has no value. Let me now have no limits on my ask at all. 
at all. So when I dropped the figure of 40,000 over the last two weeks, people went on fire. Oh, what did he say? Barnal Matama Vitpoche. Every 40,000, 40,000, you can't get it. You can't get it. You can't get it. Because anyway, your answer is going to be Sunna. Zero. If your answer is a zero, then I have no other option but to take a maximalist position. Two, okay, let me ask a different kind of uh, Dravidianist argument right now. I'll present that argument. Why haven't any of these people said, why only temples of the north, Kashi, Mathura, and Ayodhya? What about the temples of the south? Are they are apparently batting for the southerners, right? If they were Hindutva sadhanas, they should be saying, why only three temples of the north? What about other temples? Because they have decided for us that these are the holiest of our places. Okay, so if Madurai Meenakshi had been under occupation, would we not have asked for it? Absolutely. If Sri Rangam had been under occupation, you wouldn't have asked for it? Let someone tell me that Sri Rangam isn't among the holiest of our shrines. I dare them. Let them say Madurai Meenakshi is not. If Sabrimala was under occupation, would you not take it back? That's it. In a community that has 51 Shakti Peethas, 108 Divya Desams, 12 Jyotirlingas, what do you mean by three it's holiest of our shrines? Every community has its own holy shrine or holiest of shrines. I'm a Shaivite. For me, what is more important? As much as Ayodhya is important, Kashi is important, and if Chidambaram had been under occupation, that's equally important for me. <laughs> who are these people who are deciding for us to say, no, no, now that you want everything, limit it to three? On what basis do you decide? When you once, I mean, you have a grand position is, or Hinduism is not even centralized. Then how do you decide that three of these places are the holiest? If it is decentralized, then the argument has to be decentralized. Let the owners and the claimants of each of those temples decide for themselves. You don't decide for it. Two. When someone says, is, does, wouldn't this lead to some kind of a conflict and all that? They said this about 370. They said this about Rama. So every time, it's, it's a subtle thread that is being dropped. I'm saying, Rumba pata Enough. Okay. Now this won't work anymore. The community has awakened. They have seen through all of this and the evidence is right in front of your eyes and your attitudes are also right in front of people's eyes. Enough is enough. The Supreme Court basically said that even the occupier for centuries will be given land despite having lost the case. That is the most magnanimous ask that you can get from the highest constitutional court of the country. I am saying I am willing to propose even that. Somebody asked for five villages once, I am giving you five acres now. You don't want this. Consequences will follow. Time will decide. The master accountant is always time. It is a Kala Chakram. It will keep coming back and our time is now. Second, entry 28, I agree with you. I have said this in articles. I have said this in speeches. I think it's important for us to start forming a broader consensus. Since this ask has been limited to a, a select few people or select individuals, it has remained a storm in a teacup. My suggestion to you will be this. Strengthen his hands by making the temple freedom movement a Hindu movement and not the movement of one particular community in Tamil Nadu. I am not saying that anybody is limiting it to one particular community, but the perception needs to change and I certainly think people who are working for it are working towards it. But the other side constantly says, no, no, this is effectively a clique of a particular community that is interested in restoring its domination and supremacy. Address that. Don't run away from it. It's important to address that. Start the outreach. The legal battle will be fought. The gentleman who represented Sri Ram Lalla in the Ayodhya case, Sri C.S. Vaidyanathan, is the one who is leading us in the battle. I am second in command. So we are in very safe hands and those pair of hands belong to Sri C.S. Vaidyanathan. Remember that. People may not be aware of it, therefore it becomes my duty to inform people of this. Sri R. Venkat Ramani, who is the current Attorney General, was previously part of the team. He was at par with Mr. C.S. Vaidyanathan representing this matter. And then he became the Attorney General. So according to me, the stars are positioned in the right place. Please. 
please please uh, dear brother uh, we all know why you have asked this question normally this thought process comes when there is a mismanagement when something is not right something is not managed the way it is supposed to be managed and uh, the tamil nadu hrnc act is time tested by the supreme court at different points of time especially in the case of chidambaram dikshita shishu in multiple cases now now visibly among the public even a common man who is sitting in a tea stall will say temples are mismanaged why i am saying this in the last three days if you have scanned time, had the time to scan the newspaper paathundinga theriyum palani kovil la aralai thurai vikkakoodiya panjamaratham aralai thurai stall la netru kaalila ketu pona panjamaratham vikkaram just one story in the newspaper yesterday day before yesterday in avadi in a temple run by hrnc for the lord eight savara nagaya oru thur eduthutaanga yaar eduthaanga nu paathina part time archaka not a full time part time archaka part time teacher part time nurse mari part time archaka the recent audit statement of tirchandur muruga temple says 5309 cows are missing adha nama kudutha cow kanam pochu and in the audit report they have written we don't know where the cow is so idu onnu 1986 hrnc affidavit in high court 2024 what they claim we have lost 2 lakh acres of land belonging to temple so ninga overall ah pathina there is a very fit case to say that temples are being thoroughly mismanaged as one second is disturbing the faith and the cultural process idu vandu randavu process inga this is where you get disturbed more prana pratishtai for a temple that is not run by hrnc in kanjipuram the finance minister is sitting there like everybody there as a common audience wanted to watch it live and the local police were inside the temple removing the screen and saying idu permission illinga you have to take permission for putting up a screen inside a private temple in government run temples where people wanted to do annadana seva madhyana vandu prana pratishtha mudichadukapra saapadu kodukona very first time they said you got to give take permission to even to offer food inside a temple which in dharmic in our dharma that is a part of your duty when you apply for permission the question are 17 questions they ask who prepares the food where the food is coming list out all the items how many people will eat mention the quantity then you please go and meet the jc so in the mari so part number 2 is more disturbing one is mismanagement of course the part number 2 is a deliberate effort to stifle the way you practice your religion part number 3 is distorting your practice puja nadakkaradhu kedaiyadhu adu endha vidathil nadakkanumo adu kedaiyadhu indha moonru vandha ipo tamil nadu la paaka aarambichu now you have a specific question is there a fit case yes absolutely there is a fit case that's why it's a political person we keep telling as a parties thing in constituency number 100 in srirangam we said time has come to dismantle hrnc in tamil nadu which bjp when people vote us to power we will do now the very specific question of entry 28 concurrent list two days back amit shah ji was sitting in an economic summit there was an audience like you who asked a question the the opposition is unhappy with the bharat ratna that is given they say for politically you are given bharat ratna to get votes the opposition is asking why not savarkar is not given bharat ratna amit shah ji's answer is my answer amit shah ji said thank you for the suggestion <laughs> Last question. Yeah. This will be the last question. Uh, yes. Sir, sir. Uh, Namaskar, sir. Jai Namaskar. Sai Deepak and Jai. Anamalai, sir. Basically, I am from Madhya Pradesh. I am pursuing my bachelor's in here. So, sir, there are a lot of talks going about Hindu Rashtra. So, like, what are your opinions on Hindu Rashtra? And is Hindu Rashtra actually possible? One, yes, it's possible. Two, it merely means restoring the civilizational identity of this land and not using imported values to pixelate our identity it doesn't mean second grade rights to anybody else but it certainly means the preferential treatment that has been going on and on and on for over 100 years according to me not just over 75 years needs to stop and particularly history needs to be acknowledged 
So when we are told that in the, con in the context of jati and so on and so forth, acknowledgement of history is important, and addressing that situation through social justice mechanisms is important, I fail to understand how does history suddenly become irrelevant and redundant in the context of other issues. You can't selectively say history is relevant for this and not this, because this is your pain point, I'll keep doing this on a regular basis, but as far as other issues are concerned, where history is actually acting to your advantage, I will not talk about it. That can't happen. Three, my vision for Bharat is actually what I would call Pax Indica, which is Greater Bharat. What is Pax Indica? If you read history, it will speak of Pax Britannica, Pax uh, Romana, and now we are witnessing the dying gasps of Pax Americana, Pax Americana, which means it's called Roman peace or English peace or American peace, which is peace that is established under the supremacy and the leadership of a particular country where it has the widest possible economic influence, the widest possible cultural influence, and the widest possible political influence. My vision is strengthen your position within and the immediate neighborhood of undivided Bharat should also become safe for the core identity of Bharat. That is the day you would effectively come to a point where a CAA is no more necessary. One is to enact a CAA to address the existing situation, but the next is to come to a point where you have a stick strong enough to say no further assaults on this identity in my neighborhood at the very least. That is my larger vision. Creating a safe homeland and a safe neighborhood for perhaps the most traumatized, genocided, massacred population of the world. I'll leave it to Shivashree if we still have any time or if you want to wrap this up, I think. We'll wrap this up? Yes. I think we should be because I want to respect the organizers' patience and the fact that Mr. Annamalai's time is more important. So thank you, Jai Shri Ram, Vande Matram.